Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my winter, my winter bushcrafting kit. Now admittedly, I haven't been doing a whole lot this winter because it has been very cold, but I figured I would show you guys my winter kit. And before we get into it, I want to talk about one kind of difference between this kit and a lot of my other bushcrafting kits that I've showed you guys on the channel so far. And that is that when generally I make a bushcrafting survival kit, it's a very generalized kit designed to handle many facets and many different types of scenarios. This kit is much different from that, aside from the same backpack. So the first was, the first restriction or limit on this pack and its equipment was that it had to work with snowshoes. Now, for some of those who may not know, snowshoes are for as great as they are, they're only ever rated to a certain rate or weight rating. These are in particular, as I won't get into their name, are only rated to 200 pounds and I'm 150 pounds as it is. So that means that this pack cannot weigh realistically any more than 30 pounds because I can get it right up to 200 pounds, you know, have a 50 pound backpack, but that does play an effect on how effective these snowshoes are because while they're rated to 200, of course, the closer you get to 200, the less effective they're going to be. So the lighter weight the pack, the easier time you're gonna have staying on top of the snow. So that's the first restriction. The other thing that I designed this pack in mind for is to be strictly for building or creating large things in bushcrafting. So things such as shelter craft or large resource gathering, things like felling trees, things like building shelters and building other large structures for bushcrafting. So that is the primary intent for this kit. Now, of course, I do have some survival equipment in it. I'm not totally devoid of any survival stuff, of course. But... Okay guys, so to start off, just to get these off the backpack, are gonna be the snowshoes. Now I have them rigged up here onto the backpack, not really because I intend to use them like this, but just because when I'm loading up my truck, it's much easier to load these uh, it's much easier to load this all as one kind of congruent pack as opposed to having to remember, you know, did I bring the snowshoes? Did I bring... Okay, guys, due to some sound interference and I've switched up locations. So basically, though, as I was saying, when it came to the snowshoes, the snowshoes are just strapped on. You guys can see I now pulled them off because I'm getting ready to go onto the trail. Usually try to wear them as little as possible because they're pretty big and clunky, but I'm now getting into some snow where I will actually need them. So we're going to... So I'm going to throw on the snowshoes and get into the field and then we can break down the kit so we don't run into any interruptions. Anyways guys, let's do this. Okay guys, so before we dig into the backpack, I will say, just to give a little bit of exp explanation, uh, what you guys just saw me create there, so I like to call my little uh, 
snowshoe circles and that is that oftentimes when I kind of set up for a semi-permanent base camp like you see here uh, just like a really fast down and dirty thing I like to take my snowshoes off and the snow is very unpacked of course unless you pack it down like that so I usually take a little a few minutes to create a really fast and expedient snowshoe circle that way it kind of packs down my immediate area so that I don't have to be constantly wearing my snowshoes so in case you guys are wondering what the heck I just did right there I just wanted to show you guys something that I, a little trick I like to do so that I don't have to constantly wear my snowshoes. In addition, I also wanted to throw down my tarp so I keep everything nice and dry. Okay. So now let's dig into this backpack. <laughs> okay. So starting off, we're going to start off with the tools. So for expedience, I threw everything that even things I would carry on body in this kit just so that I didn't forget anything. So the first thing we're going to start off with when it comes to tools is what I call my GPS pack. And it's nothing more than simply my Garmin Organ 650T. And the primary reason I carry this, there's two reasons, but the primary one is so that whenever I build shelters or wherever I go, oftentimes it's hard to remember exactly where they are or how I got to them. So I like to keep this little 650T handy because it allows me to highlight or designate uh, places that I've built shelters or any type of structure and I can just easily reference that and it's good to go and I like to carry this little pouch or this little kit usually on my belt and in here there's nothing too much just really some uh, more batteries for the Garmin I carry a little battery pack and then I carry a manual compass should anything fail it's just nice to have you know a little bit extra in there so primarily this kit is just designed to keep, if it doesn't fall over the place, primarily to keep the Garmin going. And like I said, carry some backup battery packs and batteries for the Garmin 650T. So that's what's in here. So like I said, totally forgot, almost forgot to mention, the other reason I carry this is kind of a CYA, you know, cover your ass, kind of uh, survival piece of tool because of course, Having the 650T, if I do get lost, it allows me the ability to map my position back to a place that I'm familiar. Okay, so that's the first tool. Now, this is one that would also be on my body. Of course, this is the good old Legome uh, bush knife. And as I explained in another video of why I'm moving to smaller knives, this is because the Legome, or I'm choosing the Legome because I'm using larger tools that are heavier and... I don't want a knife that weighs me down. So that is the knife that's being chosen. And like I said, that would be on my body. Last thing that would be on my body instead of in this kit would be my good old Maxpedition um, Janus PSK, or the, uh, so the Janus pocket extension that I have retrofitted into my personal survival kit that of course I carry on me like all the time. In here I also have a few hand warmers just for good measures, but primarily nothing in there. So getting back to the main kit, this is the primary bit of what I carry. So the first thing is I'm carrying a 24 inch buck saw and this thing is responsible for doing most of the of course saw work but you know bucking trees into size cutting notches that kind of stuff is for this then i have right next to it the holtzbrook all mic i can get it out of here and this is just a really small handy hatchet primarily for limbing and notching of trees now some people may question you know why am i carrying you know hatchet plus a full-sized axe it's really due to the fact that the full-sized axe is just not the best when it comes to doing the small things like limbing and the little tasks so oftentimes when you are building you know or you're using big trees they're going to have limbs they're going to have smaller branches and the tips of them are going to be much smaller and that's what i love having the hatchet for it's just a much more handy and efficient tool and the biggest thing it goes back to is fatigue and i'm trying with this kit to limit my own personal fatigue so that's why i'm carrying this okay so then the main uh you know so the main tool here is the double bit axe now i've swapped over to a double bit axe for this one for a couple reasons i'm not sure i'll stick to the double bit uh, just because i 
I want to test it, I want to play with it, because I really have not used my double bit too much, but at the same time I'm not sure I'll stick with it just because I've always had mixed feelings about double bits, but this in particular is a vintage uh, True Temper Vulcan in here, so the double bit isn't particularly amazing, but I'm going to play with it, see if I really like it, but for sure either I'm going to have a double bit or a full-sized felling axe here, and you know, so like I said, still learning, still seeing if I like it, and seeing what I want to do. Of course, there is always trade-offs with double bits. I've never been a huge fan of having two edges, just because it's one extra edge you have to watch out for. But at the same time, what I do like about double bits is that, you know, you have two edges. One that you can use for more rough and tough stuff, and another one that you can keep for just contact of wood. So if you need to hit some roots, you know, kind of break up some frozen ground, you know, one side can do that very well. The other side, you know, can be left just for wood. So that is something I definitely like about it. And if nothing else, you do have twice the edges. So even if you are using just, uh, if you are just using this just on wood, then you get twice the edges. However, you do lose out on a hammer pull. However, I have kind of balanced that out because once again with the all mic, you know, this does have not so much a hammer pull per se, but it does have a pull on it. So if I need to drive in uh, stakes or nails or whatever, you know, I can certainly do that with the all mic. So those are, <laughs> I'm trying to not get them all snowy. <laughs> so those are the primary tools uh, for construction or for building. So getting into some more bushcrafting kind of survival stuff. I'm also carrying in here, it's kind of hard to see, but in here is all the pieces and parts and stuff for the Bushcraft Essentials bush, bush Box, I think Bush Box LF in there. And so that's just for starting down in dirty fires. If I just need to boil something real quick, I'm also carrying my field expedient small little um, fire kit or kind of tinder kit for starting fires, and then lastly, I'm carrying my bot, uh, my Vargo Titanium bot with its little hanger so that I can either, you know, use this over an open fire and boil it that way, or if I don't want to do that, I can just set this straight up on the LF itself. So, got a little, got a few ways to run with the bot, but I really like the bot because it's super lightweight, and it's also very versatile because it's a bot. So it's a bottle and a pot. So kind of a little bit of best of both worlds in a way. So that is the primary components to the kit itself. So lastly is this area in here. And you guys basically saw the primary contents of what was in here. And that is this tarp, this kind of tent. It's half tarp, half mylar blanket. That's the primary component that sits in here. Other than that, I just have some quick snacks in here in case I get hungry because building tends to work up hunger and so just have a few you know things for food so I usually use the tarp in applications like this just so that I have an area where one I can set my tools down such as knives if I need to or primarily things like the axe the hatchet the saw I can you know sheath them set them down on here and that way they're not getting buried down deep into the snow because it's really hard for you guys to see it's hard for me to show without you know making myself cold but the snow is very deep especially in areas that are unpacked i mean once again you guys can see my shoes but i thoroughly packed this area down with my snowshoes before taking the shoes off have had i just walked out here if i just stepped into some of the unpacked snow you know it's easily several feet deep so when we're talking about things like hatchets axes saws that you know, have some weight to them that sink as opposed to sitting on top of the snow you can't really just set that stuff on the snow in addition you know the snow uh, it is snow and it can cause rust on your axe blades your saw blades hatchet blades knife blades so having something that's nice like this uh tarp to just lay down so you can lay down your stuff so it doesn't get wet and, you know rusty or it doesn't just get lost in general is a really nice thing so that's the primary reason I have the tarp it also you know compacts down very well and it's very light so it works well for this whole setup so yeah guys I really don't have a lot like I said this is a very specific pack just to building or large crafts 
so it's like I said, very specific. It doesn't have a lot of components to it, and I'm trying to I tried to keep it that way so that um, so that it would be lightweight, so it'd be easy to pack in, and so that I didn't have a whole bunch of stuff that I had to fight for, you know, in the backpack when I'm trying to grab my axe. You know, I'm not pulling out a whole bunch of crap that I'm not going to use. So I tried to keep this very specific to what I actually needed and not just what I thought I might need. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And as always, God bless and I'm out. Okay guys, just to show you what I mean, this is what I'm talking about. I'm gonna walk out into the unpacked snow. You guys can see here, unpacked snow. You can see I am past my knees in this snow. So when I'm talking about this snow being unpacked and very deep, this is what I mean, it's, it is very deep. So anyways, just wanted to make a short little end card to this video, showing you guys that really I'm not kidding, this stuff is pretty deep.